hello guys hello people greetings to you all and i welcome you all back once again to this channel yes i came across a video about benny hin when you know he was asking people to forgive him because of prophecies that was not true hmm. yes prophecies that was not true most especially when it comes to uh the prosperity prophecy he confessed that people should forgive him that most of those prophecy was not from God. After watching that video, I said to myself that this is what people want to hear. Yes, this is what people want to hear. This is the reason why you see a lot of pastors. A lot of pastors has missed it. Majority of them has missed it. Because when you are preaching the kingdom, you are preaching about repentance, you know, about the kingdom of God. Preaching about heaven and preaching about hell. You will hardly see people fellowshipping with you because they don't want to hear this repentance of a thing at all. But the Bible said that we should seek ye first the kingdom of God. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing will be added unto you. No, but the people don't want to seek first the kingdom, but they want to go after money. They want to go after that thing that is very, very perishable. Perishable something. Something that you will die and leave. I just want you guys to tell me, how many people did you know that have died? That took their weight with them? That took their property? That took their cars with them? None of them. You cannot boast and tell me that this is one person that you know that has died that took every of his belongings with him or with her when she was going or when he was going to the other world. You will not take anything with you, but the only thing that you will take with you is the salvation of your soul. The only thing that you will take with you on the last day when you are going is your relationship with God. That is what you will take with you. But unfortunately, people don't want to have that relationship with God. All they just want from God is blessing. All they just want from God is healing. All they just want from God is abundant words. This is the reason why many pastors keep on deceiving you. They tell you to sow seed. I am not telling you that sowing seed is something that is bad. It's not bad. In fact, as a Christian, there are some things that you will need and this thing is not coming forth. Then you will go and sow seed to see if it will comfort. This is sacrifice. You will go and sacrifice. Do it as a sacrifice to God. Then you will see it coming forth. Abraham did sacrifice. Many people in the Bible, they did sacrifice to God. When you take a look at the word of God, after Abraham had given birth to Isaac, God told him to go and sacrifice Isaac. Because Abraham is the father of the whole nation. For that promises in the life of Abraham to come to manifestation, God have to tell Abraham to go and sacrifice his only son. When you take a look at it, God said, your only son, Isaac, your only son. For God to tell Abraham that kind of thing, I say again, what God will define. God knows that Isaac was the only son of Abraham, but God had to remind him. Just in case, you they forget say now your only son. Make I tell you, may you not forget now your only son. But Abraham had to took that bold step. Abraham took that bold decision. After Abraham went to sacrifice Isaac, God now saw that yes. So Abraham, you will go as far as sacrificing your only son to me. For this reason, I have taken. Begin the bond. Begin the bond. They bond. They go. You understand? That is how it is. I am not saying that sowing a seed is bad. You have to sow a seed from your heart. Sowing a seed has to be something between you and God. Not a pastor will come and tell you to sow a seed. There was a church I went to some years ago, you know? So they invited a pastor. This pastor, after preaching, I think that was uh, on the 31st of December, 2009 or 2010 if i'm not mistaken it's 
between 2009 and 2010 after pastor don't preach the preach he enter my head where well, well. the the man want to spoil the preach where he preach finish he begin to cause seed i sow seed yes but not force me i do it between me and god you understand the man begin to cause seed first of all he, i think he called 100 euro from 100 euro he begin reduce them reduce them the one that annoyed me the most was the more the, the more you give is the more that you will receive blessing from God. I say, ah uh ah, -uh. since when God don't become a ballist? Or since when God don't become, you know, pay as you go. I don't understand. That thing annoyed me. And that was my first time in that church. And that happens to be my last time in that church. I never went back to that church again. I'm like, what, what kind of something is this? Is this what the Lord is saying? Tell people to sow seed. But don't tell them that if you don't sow seed, that you will not receive blessing. He said, God saying in his word, he said, I have mercy on whosoever will have mercy on. You don't tell God who to bless. You don't tell God who to have mercy on. You don't say God. You are not God. You don't know how you walk. You don't know how God walk. It is only him that knows how he does his thing. So it's so unfortunate that people don't want to listen to the word of God anymore. All they want to listen to is how God will bless them. You, you want from God, but you don't know that God also, in a return, want from you. What does God want from you? God wants a relationship with you. God wants to, want to have that intimacy with you. Yes, God wants to have that intimacy with you. A time reserved for him. A time to confess your sin. A time to tell him, Lord, I am sorry. A time to tell him, Lord, I love you. Tell God how you love him. Tell him how you love him. Confess your sins to him. Tell him to help you to live a holy life and to live a righteous life. These are the things God wants from us. There are many things that God wants from us, but we don't want to listen. We don't want to listen. All that we want is only that is only that thing that we want from God, not what God wants from us. This is the reason why many of you are being deceived. This is the reason why it seems like Christianity is a kind of a, a, a joke. Because people are taking Christianity to be a joke. People are taking Christianity to be a joke. And Christianity is the most powerful religion on earth. It's the most powerful religion. But unfortunately, because of some men of God, Christianity has become a joke because of majority of the men of God. How can a pastor or a prophet or an evangelist come on the pulpit and say something that is not true? You don't let anybody to pressurize you as a pastor. You are not in a competition with anybody. You are not in a competition with anybody. For God to call you, there is a reason why he called you. He called you to go and save souls. He called you to go and bring back those people that are lost back to him. Yes, definitely God said that he is going to bless our bread and water. He will bless our bread and water. But stop focusing on the blessing alone. And rejecting the salvation of your soul. Focus on, 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 on the salvation of your soul. And leave the blessing. First of all, you seek the kingdom. And the blessing will come after seeking the kingdom. This is what the Bible said. Don't go and seek blessing, don't go and seek healing, don't go and seek that, seek this, seek this, that is not important and forget about the kingdom of God. People of God, you have to try to know God for yourself so that you will not be deceived by any man, so that you will not be deceived by any woman in the name of a man of God, in the name of a woman of God. Try to know God for yourself and try your best to look for a Bible-believing church. Let Prophet Tibetra always talk about it. He said you should go and look for a Bible-believing church. A church that they are focusing on repentance. A church that they are focusing on your goal, which is heaven. So that you will not miss it. Majority of the pastors, they don't care if you miss it. Because them themselves, they know they don't already miss them. They have already missed it. So if you miss it, it's not their business. It's not their business. So you have to go and look for a church. Don't look at the congregation. Don't... Don't look, no, when you look at the congregation, you will, you will miss your step. 
They might be two in that church. They might be three in that church, but they know they are going. They know where they are going to. They know their focus. And their focus is heaven. Yes, their focus is heaven. Please, stop looking for what is not looking for you. Look for what is looking for you. Jesus is looking for you. Money, not they find you. Now you they find now. Leave money to find you. When money begin to find you, you go see and say everywhere, every door go open. Jesus is looking for you. You have to look for him also. He's waiting for you to open your door, the door of your heart, to accept him into your life. So that he will come in and be with you. So that he will come in and you will rest on him. So, this is so painful. It's so painful that a lot of people has already missed it. And I am praying for everybody, every one of us that has already missed it, that God should make us to come back to him. Because the Bible said that on the last day, only the true believer will be righteous, will be fine holy. Please, my dear brothers and sisters, this life that we are living is not for us. This world that we are living is not for us. One day, we will leave this world and go back to our Savior. We are all labors, a visitor in this world. For us not to miss it, for us not to end up in eternal destruction. Let us come back to Jesus. He is waiting for you. It was because of you that made him to go to the cross of Calvary. It was because of you that made people to beat him. He took our sin to the cross of Calvary. He was buried on the third day he resurrected again and left it all day. In the grave, there are a lot of things that Jesus took to the cross of Calvary. He took your sickness, he took your disease, he took your infirmity, your poverty to the cross of Calvary and he left it there on the grave. So there is a need for you to know him. There is a need for you to have that personal relationship with him. Yeah, so in all said and done, I want to say thank you very much for taking out your time to watch this video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like and comment. May God bless you all and I will see you again next time. Bye.